Hello, horse girls and guys. Welcome back. It's been a little bit. Um, I want to start this off by apologizing for the Anchor and Spotify listeners about last week because last week's episode did not make it onto either of those. It was just on YouTube and I haven't figured out, you know, I thought I was going to sit down and figure out how to get it onto Anchor or Spotify, but basically the entire time I recorded my episode, my computer like wasn't connected to my internet and I don't know why. I kept trying to get it to connect to the internet and it wouldn't. So I ultimately had to restart my computer. And after I restarted it, Anchor did not save anything that I had been recording. So that was really annoying, but I at least still have the episode. It's on YouTube, so I will link it down below for the um, audio listeners if you would like to watch it there. But anywho, sorry about that. Some technical difficulties, but I did record last week. Um, and if you didn't hear it, I talked about my new cult. Um, what else did I talk about? The new cult. Oh, I talked a little bit about, um, fat people riding horses because there was a comment left on one of my videos about that. And so I just like refreshed my take on that. I haven't talked about that in a long time. So yeah, that's what I talked about in that episode. So if you're interested in listening to it, I'll leave it down below again. But yeah, so today is like a rainy, um, kind of just bummy day outside so if you hear like the rain in the background I apologize especially for you YouTube watchers um, I know I've said this before but the YouTube watchers are not getting the same audio that's going into the microphone this is simply just the audio listeners that's getting the microphone so you might not hear it but the YouTube listeners might because it's just getting my camera audio um, but anyways yeah so it has been like 70 degrees the last couple days in November and it's really throwing me for a loop. I actually think that our grass grew a little bit um, recently because it's been so warm and so nice. But yeah, it's probably not going to be like that for much longer because this weekend is supposed to be like 30 degrees and it makes my soul really sad. Um, oh, and the daylight savings like went over. I don't know. It, when are we going to get rid of the daylight savings? I know they talk about it every single year that like eventually we're going to get rid of it or we're only going to do two more times. And it's like, dude, just get rid of it. Everyone hates it. Okay. It's overrated. Nobody actually, I think it's just not rated well at all. Like it's, it's terribly rated. Um, because nobody likes it. It's just like the season of sadness and, you know, I actually, as much as I really enjoy waking up when the sun is up, I think I would rather leave, I don't even know what we're on. Are we on standard time or are we on the other one? I would rather just leave it and not set the clocks um, ahead. I think we set them ahead last time so that it's light when we wake up. I'd rather just leave it. And if it's dark when we wake up, like, it sucks waking up in the dark. Like, I have the hardest time rolling out of bed when it's dark outside but I would rather do that if it's gonna stay light outside past 5 p.m because now it is just starting to get dark at 5 p.m it's nearly dark and I don't like that like that means I have to sit in in darkness for the next four hours until like I feel sleepy enough to go to bed and the first couple days oh my god sorry I to yawn um the first couple days it was like, you know, 7.30, 8, and I was getting really tired. Like, I was laying in bed, like, I need to stay up for a little bit longer because I don't want to wake up so early. But I was so tired. And then I've been, like, waking up at, like, 5.45, 5.50 before my alarm because like, my alarm normally goes off at 6, but I've just been naturally waking up at 5.50 because my brain thinks that it's, like, 6.50, and I'm way late, but yeah, the last couple days haven't been so bad, but for a while there, it was like, oh my God, I just don't like the time change. I wish we could get rid of it. I already, I know there's states that already just don't do it. And why can't we be like them? Um, yeah, that's what I want to know. But anyways, in other news, um, 
not much has been going on around here. Um, Oakley got her first saddling the other day, so that was really exciting. That's going to be my next video, actually, probably after this one. I will be uploading an update video on YouTube on Oakley's training. I haven't done a training video on Oakley since, like, the beginning of the summer. And that's mostly just because I don't work with her, like, super religiously. I work with her, like, every couple weeks or, like, every other week. Um... Just because, like, when I got her in January, we had so much work to do. And, like, a big portion of, like, earlier this summer was just teaching her how to put on a halter. Like, she couldn't even, like, be caught or anything. So, I had to teach her how to be haltered and all that stuff. So, we are just getting around to starting groundwork. And she's done so, so well. I really, really like that horse. Um, I think she's going to be a hard one to sell down the road if I decide to sell her. I'm like still leaning towards the fact that I will probably sell her. Like I can't keep all of them, but oh my God, it's like 2.30 in the afternoon. Why am I yawning so much? Um, but I don't know. I should sell her down the road. It's just going to be tough because I've, I'm putting so much work and time into her that I'm really going to be picky about who I sell her to because I want to make sure that they are going to be a great fit for her. So who knows? Like I still have Hazel and when Hazel gets broke out, who knows if I'm going to sell her or keep her. She's going to be a whole, she's going to be a harder project. I think Oakley has been a really time consuming, slow project, but I think Hazel is just going to be a hard project. Um, which is why she was given to me in the first place. Cause her old owners were like, yep, we're done. We're done with this one. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I think I'm going to go to the auction or the sale bar next month. And I have not been, I've wanted to go like every single month this year and I always forget. And then I see people like on Facebook or Snapchat at the sale barn and I'm like, oh, that was today. Like I totally forgot. Um, just like the last 12 months, I forgot. So I put it on my calendar for next month. It's on the 5th of December. So I really want to try and go, even if I don't buy anything, which I shouldn't because I just got a new Colt. I shouldn't. And I probably won't work with anyone through the winter. I still want to go and see how prices are and whatnot. But my, um, old boarders have been talking about bringing their horses back so I'm like I'm running out of room and I probably should just shouldn't buy anymore anyways but I don't know who knows if that's even gonna happen like we talk about it a lot but you know the thing with clients is like everyone likes to talk about stuff but you really have to just take it for a grain of salt until the horse is actually here and then you know it's a different story but yeah my boarders moved their horses in April um, and they're, you know, talking about bringing them back. So we'll see this winter, they might be returning as well. So yeah, I might definitely be running out of room. Um, I still need to rearrange everybody. So I don't know if you guys do this, but I'm going to be rearranging horses once like the consistent freezing weather stays and sticks around. Um, right now I have Bibi and Hazel and the goats and Chance, the colt, up front. Chance is not with them in, like, the same pen, but he's right next to them. So I have all of them up in their one pen. And then I have Oakley, Luna, and Sugar behind my house. And so they're, like, across the property. But I cannot get, like, a water heater or anything back to them. So I don't know if I've told you guys this before. I'm pretty sure I have in the YouTube videos. But for the podcast listeners, I only have one outlet on the outside of my house. One. That's it. We live on in a trailer. And there is only one singular outlet on the outside of our house, right? And there is not another power source on the property. Ugh, it's so irritating. There's only been a house on this property the last few years. Otherwise, it was like vacant for a hundred years or something. <laughs> I'm probably not that long. But anyways, there's only one single power source for the entire outside. And that is the outlet that's on our house. So last year, I had to run like 
100, 150 feet of extension cord all the way out to the one horse's water tub and one to the goat's water tub. So I had two water heaters plugged in. And I think that, I don't think that was too much for the outlet. What was really just dangerous was that we also had the tractor plugged in because we have like a snow blower on the back of our tractor for the driveway. And so we had to park that in our driveway. And of course to keep the, I don't know. I don't know why the tractor needed plugged in, but it needed plugged in so that it wouldn't be dead. And so that had to be plugged into the house too. And so that was like too much, too much for one outlet. And so I don't know, my brother keeps saying he was gonna come help me and put in another outlet, but I don't know. I think I might just call our power company and have them put one on the pole at the end of our driveway so that we can at least plug in the tractor down there. You know what I mean? So my dilemma is that I'm gonna move Sugar, Luna, and Oakley from behind my house up to the front somewhere. Um, I've got two pens out front. I've got the one that BB and Hazel live in and I've got one across the driveway. So if I move those three up, I can run two water heaters. Um, I don't think that the goats, sorry, yawning for the sixth time. I don't think the goats need their own water heater. I think I'm gonna be able to leave them out with the horses through the winter. So that'll be helpful, but yeah. Once the cold weather starts like sticking for a while, I'm gonna have to move them up there. And we'll see how Oakley does with that because Oakley has been in her own pen since January when I got her. She has been next to the other horses so she can still socialize and stuff, but she has been in her own pen. So we'll see how that goes because Hazel is currently the boss of BB and the goats. And I think that Oakley and her might go head to head a little bit because Oakley is kind of dominant, but who knows? She's also in her own pen, so she might just be a big talker. So yeah, we're gonna see about that. Um, what else was I gonna talk about in this? I thought I had something else. Um, little Chance is doing good. I've had him for two weeks today and He's doing really, really well. I posted on my Instagram some two-week update pictures. So if you haven't been over to the Instagram page where I post, I have like my personal Instagram and then I have my Trimer Horses Instagram where I post, you know, stuff regarding my business and my horses and my training. So if you haven't looked at that, be sure to check it out. It's usually linked in the description box or my handles in the description box. So go check that out. But I posted some pictures today of like the two week difference from the day I brought him home to today and like his back and and like how he's filled out. He's definitely gained some weight. So I'm really happy with how he looks. And today, since it was gonna rain, I put him in my trailer because his little separate pen doesn't have its own like hut or anything or lean to. So I just put him in my trailer if it's gonna rain a lot. And he has been really good about loading. I was actually really surprised today I brought him to the trailer and he kind of looked at it, kind of thought about not getting in it. And then I was like, I showed him his little bucket of grain and he was like, oh, okay. So he just hopped right up in there. He was so cute. He's so, he's so cute. He's really coming around to, um, and you know, being more comfortable with being handled and stuff. So that's really exciting. I think he's going to be such a cute little thinker and I think he's going to be red done, which is cool. Um, the other mare that I picked up with him seems to be doing really good with her new owners. Uh, she's out on a pasture with a bunch of horses and she's like slowly coming around. Um, she's figured out that like humans have treats a lot of times and treats are really awesome. So <laughs> her new owner is always posting pictures of like her coming up looking for treats and like, you know, just getting used to having people around and getting scratches and stuff. So I'm really excited to see how she does with her. But yeah. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about something that just, you know what, it annoyed me a little. So I have been exploring the world of clicker training this year because Oakley, I decided to clicker train her or positive reinforcement. They're kind of like interchangeable. Clicker training, positive reinforcement, they're the same thing. Or R plus, some people call it that. Um, you know, whatever. You're clicking and treating. And a lot of people use this technique with their Mustangs. 
And that's awesome, right? Like, because, you know, Mustangs are so feral that having a tangible reward for them really resonates well with them. So a lot of people use this technique for their Mustangs. So I follow Mustang Maddie on Facebook. Um, and she has come across, you know, my YouTube a few times. I'm not like a stan or anything, but I have seen her content and have watched some of her videos, you know, to give me some, you know, more research and whatever. Um, but she posted something on Facebook the other day, October 26th, that I was just kind of like, mm, okay. So lately, I've, I've run into this lately a little bit more than I have in the past, but she posted this on October 26th and it says, three common training practices we advocate against. This will either intrigue or ruffle some feathers. Number one, flooding. Two, punishment. Three, absolute control. So she's, she, it, her Facebook page is kind of like her blog where she, you know, her team or whatever posts, you know, these articles. Okay, well, one, flooding. Flooding means to add stimuli to the horse. Wait, sorry. Flooding means to add stimuli the horse is afraid of, giving him no chance of escape and not stopping until the trainer gets a desired outcome. This is so prevalent. The basis of many, quote, natural horsemanship desensitization training plans. It can look like flapping a tarp bet, tarp slash bag, mounting up before a colt has been adequately prepared and riding through a huge fear reaction, applying excessive pressure when the horse desperately tries to escape, all with zero releases until the horse goes into shutdown mode, which could lead to explosiveness later on, or long-term term learned helplessness, where the light leaves the eyes, he just takes it. This is un unethical, ineffective, and a recipe for trauma. Okay. So when I saw that, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, that's wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, she already posted on there that it would ruffle some feathers. Well, it kind of ruffled mine because I spent a long time, like before I made this channel, before, you know, I wanted to be an influencer of the world or anything, I, I learned how to train my horses myself. Um, I did all all the research that I could. I learned from other people. I never took lessons. I had some people in my life that were like mentors to me. Um, and I kind of took bits and pieces of what I liked from each person and, and kind of developed my own um, style of training. And even from a young age, I knew that I really resonated with natural horsemanship. That is something that I really, really liked. Um, you know, I watched a lot of Rick Gore and I was just kind of like, you know what? I really, I want to try this natural horsemanship thing. And not everybody in my life did natural horsemanship and not everybody in my life does now. I know some very, um, I don't want to, I don't want to call them snobby people, but like, you know, in my eyes, that's kind of how they are. They're kind of snobby, um, very high up show people that um, I would call their horsemanship style like modern day horsemanship style or just modern horsemanship um, that I don't really agree with. And I, when I saw this, you know, thing that Mustang Maddie posted, it reminded me of a few other things that I have seen lately. And I'm not really sure why natural horsemanship is getting the flack that it is lately because um, I have listened to a few Equifery episodes, which is Jill Treese's podcast, which is, I really like the podcast, but it, there has been a couple conversations that they have had on there that kind of gave me the same vibe that this, this did in that natural horsemanship just is bad. And it's kind of annoying me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's kind of annoying me because for one, this, I just, this whole, this flooding thing, the basis of many natural horsemanship desensitization plans, that's not correct. And I commented on this post, there was no response, of course, but I'm sorry. Anybody that has actually studied natural horsemanship and takes it seriously and actually wants to do it properly is well aware that this is, that's not what natural horsemanship is. So I don't know why they're putting that label on this type of, this flooding behavior. Because 
that's not what nat natural horsemanship should have absolutely no um relation to what flooding is so you know i'll go into a little bit more detail if you guys don't know what flooding is or if you're not you know rehearsed in the terms flooding is just basically you know throwing a whole bunch of stuff at your horse say you're desensitizing them to a plastic bag you're flapping the plastic bag at them they're terrified of it they're pulling back they're trying to get away from it they don't know what you want they're terrified of this bag and you're just flapping it flapping it flapping it until they give up because they don't know what else to do and then you give them a reward because they gave up that's not what natural horsemanship is and it never has been so can we please stop slapping oh that's natural horsemanship on everything that is like a negative um I don't know, a negative um, training technique. Like, that's not natural horsemanship. I would call that like modern day type horsemanship. Um, natural horsemanship is completely, has entirely always been based on pressure and release. So I don't, that's, this is why I'm confused lately. Like, why is everybody calling this natural horsemanship? That's not what natural horsemanship is. And you would know that if you actually studied it. Um, I spent so much time studying natural horsemanship because I really wanted to make sure I was doing it right and giving my horses like the best training that I thought I could give them. And that's not what natural horsemanship is. It's actually quite the opposite. Like natural horsemanship has always been based around making things as natural as possible for the horse, which is largely pressure and release. Um, natural horsemanship would be flapping the plastic bag at the horse and then quitting. Even if, even if they are spooked at it, even if they react to it, flap it at them, let them think about it for a second and then quit. Reward them, scratch them, comfort them, do it again. Flap it at them and then quit. Put the pressure on, then take it off. Put the pressure on and then take it off. And slowly the horse can think through the situation that the bag is flapping, but it's not trying to eat them. The bag is flapping, but it will stop to think through the problem. That is not, flooding is literally the opposite. So I don't know why lately I've seen so many um, quote unquote natural horsemanship slapped in front of everything that people have to hate on but like that's just not correct and I feel like sorry I gotta take this off <laughs> I feel like with as big of a following as Mustang Maddie has that's really not fair to be putting that in an article especially for people that that maybe are just trying to f to figure out which training style they like better and now you're putting natural horsemanship in front of a, an action like flooding to drive people away from natural horsemanship when somebody may have no idea what natural horsemanship actually is and now they think negatively of it <sighs> that's just annoying to me you know like that's that's not what it is and anybody that has spent the time to actually learn about natural horsemanship and how to do it properly would know that that's not what it is so i don't know if you're doing flooding or whatever and they're you're calling yourself natural horsemanship well that's you're not doing that. You're not doing natural horsemanship if that's what you're doing to your horses. But I just thought I would share my opinion on that and let me know what you guys think. Like if you agree down below or even if you disagree, you know, give me your opinion because I like to have discussions about things like this. I don't necessarily think I'm right all the time, but I did want to shed some light on that because I don't know. I've seen a few different things lately where it's like, oh yeah, natural horsemanship. And I'm like, what is that? natural horsemanship lately like there are people doing so much worse things and worse training methods than what natural horsemanship is I think I really like natural horsemanship and that's why I always resonated with it because it is largely about putting the horse first and taking things at the horse's pace and doing things in a way that the horse can understand um and really building that respect and connection with them than it is about you know the person so yeah, I just don't think that's fair. This is not fair. Why would you call it that? Um, yeah. She also has some stuff about punishment. Punishment means to add adversive stimulus or take away an appetite. Sorry, I cannot read. Stimulus to decrease a behavior. 
Attempting to stop a behavior of reinforcing what you do want is a slippery slope. Doing so could cover up root causes for behavior, instigate a trainer to increasingly excessive force, create displacement behaviors where different unwanted behaviors pop up like weeds can cause the horse confusion and distress. Okay, so like I am one of those people that I do believe in punishment to an extent. I don't think that like we have to punish horses for everything that they do wrong especially horses in training. Um, I think that punishment is necessary in very certain situations. Like for instance, my horse sugar, um, she will bite once in a while. She, I have had sugar for 15 years. She is well aware that she better not bite me because and for once she's my lesson horse, like biting, putting your teeth on me to cause pain is never never an option. If she pins her ears or she squeals or something, that is enough for me to think, okay, there's some, something's going on here. Like, is she have an ulcer or something? Is there a reason why is she pinning her ears? Like she's showing me she's in pain, but not to physically bite me. That's where it crosses the line for me. So, so yeah, there's like specific situations where I think punishment is appropriate but I'm not going to punish like my super green horse that is just starting to learn um, groundwork and is just starting to learn um, how to be saddled for spooking at the saddle or bucking because, you know, she has only had the saddle on a few times. Um, I would never like punish her for learning basically. So yeah, I am one of those people that I think it is okay to be physical with your horse because out in the pasture, the horses are physical with each other. They will bite each other. They'll kick each other. Um, and, you know, and, and nothing that I'm going to do, like, if I smack my horse, I cannot smack a horse hard enough to inflict as much pain as another horse smacking them or kicking them would. So a 1,200-pound animal, like, me flicking them is, they're probably like, dude, quit flicking me. But, yeah. So that's that's just my opinion on that. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but... Yeah. So <laughs> that's about all I have for today, to be honest. So I will put last week's episode down below in the description if you did not get the chance to look at it um, or listen to it. So I'll put it down there for you guys if you um, if you so want to go over there. But thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. I'm sorry it was a little bit short but I will be back at it next week with another one. So let me know what you think down below. Also leave some comments down below of any topics you would like me to discuss or share my opinion on or anything down below as well. Um, I really, I like it when you guys engage that way so that I have, you know, some insight as to what you guys want to hear and, you know, topics to talk about. I don't have a question of the day because like I have not gotten any comments lately. I just really haven't. So we don't have a comment of the day for today, but next time, Leave your comment down below in the description or in the comment section so that I can read something next week from this episode. So thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.